Hi, so uh, today I'm going to talk about the ellipsoid method for combinatorial optimization. And uh, just to point out, the paper is actually really long, it's like 30 pages, and it has about uh, 20 or so theorems. So I had a really hard time uh, figuring out what to present and what to uh, not present. Uh, and I opted to give you guys a brief overview of the ellipsoid method, what it is and how it works, and what it is used for. Alright, this is the ellipsoid method. It's an iterative method for solving a combinatorial optimization problem. What is a combinatorial optimization problem? It's an optimization problem where the set of feasible solutions is countable, is finite and countable. One example of a combinatorial optimization problem is the classical problem of finding the smallest vertex cover in a graph. A vertex cover is a set of edges in a graph such that each vertex in the graph is incident to at least one uh, sorry, edge in the graph. So, a vertex cover is by definition a subset of the edges in the graph. So, the set of possible solutions is limited. Uh, it's actually the power set of the set of edges in the graph. It's also countable. So, that's an example of a combinatorial optimization problem. So, a, the ellipsoid method, method is an iterative method for solving a combinatorial optimization problem that assumes access to a feasibility oracle. What do we mean by a feasibility oracle? It's a hypothesized machine that can take a candidate solution as an input and checks the feasibility of that solution. Um, we'll talk about this a little bit later. One requirement of the combinatorial optimization problem uh, is that the objective function has to be linear. So, uh, for example, the objective function can be the dot product of a fixed vector <laughs> and a vector, the vector representing a candidate solution. All right, and it can be either a maximization or a minimization problem. Okay, so before I start... Okay, so some preliminaries before I start describing the algorithm. The algorithm is actually based on a classical approach for dealing with combinatorial optimization problems, which is basically to convert the uh, combinatorial problem to a continuous problem and this is usually done by extending the solution space to include all vectors in the convex hull of the original solution space um, and we can actually prove that the even after extending the solution space the optimum value of the problem remains the same and the reason is the convexity sort of of the objective function because the objective function is linear it follows that it's convex and because it's convex extending the solution set to the convex hull of the original solution set doesn't affect the optimum value and we can observe here that the right side of the problem is actually a linear programming problem so, uh, and uh, we can deal with that LP problem using typical approaches for solving LP problems. So, as I said earlier, the ellipsoid method assumes a feasibility oracle, and I refer to that from now on as a cutting plane oracle, which is basically a procedure that 
recognizes feasibility of candidate solutions for the LP. So if a vector is feasible, the procedure tells us that it is. And if it's not, it actually constructs what we call a separator hyperplane and produces that as an output. So a separator hyperplane is any plane that stands between the vector provided as input and the feasible region of the problem. So the way it works is that it generates a sequence of ellipsoids um, such that the size of each ellipsoid in the sequence decreases exponentially at every step. And due to this property, uh, it is the fact that um, the, uh, the, this, the, ellipsoid conver the ellipsoid generated by the algorithm converges to the optimal vector. Okay, so uh, this is just the geometric intuition behind the problem. So first of all, uh, a couple of assumptions that are implicitly made by the algorithm. Um, it assumes that the feasible solution set is bounded, which is a natural assumption to make in theoretical and practical cases. And it also assumes that that bound is known explicitly. So for example, one way to provide such a bound is to say the feasible region is bounded by a ball in the underlying topological space, a ball with a certain radius. It is also assumed that the set contains a ball. And it will become later clearer why this is why this particular assumption is needed. But yeah, so yeah, so on to the way how uh, to the way the algorithm works. So it's an iterative algorithm, and at the kth step, the ellipsoid uh, currently maintained by the algorithm includes a set of points for which the objective function is at least as large as the best objective found so far during the running of the algorithm. What we do next is we look at the center of that ellipsoid and we ask the cutting plane oracle whether the center is feasible. If the oracle says the center is feasible, we take a hyperplane through the center, which avoids the feasible region. So we construct a hyperplane that passes through the center, and we consider the side of that hyperplane that doesn't include the feasible region. So that hyperplane must avoid the feasible region. That hype, it's a property of that hyperplane that it cuts, it has to cut the ellipsoid into two halves since it passes through the center. So we pick the half of the ellipsoid which contains the feasible region. And we include that half ellipsoid in a new ellipsoid of least volume. So we construct the smallest ellipsoid possible that contains the half of that previous ellipsoid that we're interested in. So that happens if the oracle says the center is feasible. If the oracle says the center is infeasible, we construct another hyperplane, the hyperplane of points that has the same, uh, at which the objective function takes the same value as the value it takes at the ellipsoid center. So we construct a hyperplane of these points and we consider that hyperplane as the current hyperplane. So if we keep and we do the same, we do the same thing. So um, yeah, if we keep doing this, the volumes of ellipsoids will actually 
keep decreasing until eventually uh, the if we if we if we round the volume of the ellipsoid it will eventually become zero and uh, yeah it and the algorithm actually guarantees that the feasible centers of ellipsoids will converge to the optimum solution very fast. So this is just a, a geometric illustration of the method. Um, so at the top left corner, we have the um, initial status, sort of, of the problem. So the first ellipsoid is the, uh, is the big circle. The center of that ellipsoid is x0, so and the dotted lines on the plane indicate the value of the objective function. So, yeah, and the feasible region is assumed to lie somewhere inside the, the circle. So, since the first solution we start with is, uh, is feasible, we, uh, like we said, we construct a hyperplane, um, or in this case, a, a line of all points in the feasible region that have the same objective function value as the center of the ellipsoid. That line will that line will uh, pass through the center of the ellipsoid and. Therefore, it will divide the ellipsoid into two halves. So we take the smaller half and we surround that with a new ellipsoid of least volume. And uh, the same thing happens in the second step. So this is our new ellipsoid. We compute the center and uh, we find out whether it's in the feasible region. In this case, it turns that it is. So in this case, actually, the feasible region is the whole space. So we always draw the line of the points which have the same value, uh, which have the same objective value as the uh, ellipsoid center. That line will again divide the uh, the current ellipsoid into two halves. So we take um, the half we're interested in and and surround that with a new ellipsoid. So this will become clear later, but um, in case the ellipsoid center is feasible, we actually take the um, um, yeah, we take the negative of the um, we take the negative of the normal of the line to be the uh, so if the normal faces this way, we consider the the other side of the uh, solution space. So this is just an illustration how, of how the algorithm works. Um, so these are the uh, these equations illustrate how the um, algorithm um, actually works. So those are the concrete equations of the algorithm. So um, I mean xk plus 1 is xk is the center of ellipsoid uh, the kth iteration. So this equation gives us the center of the ellipsoid at time at iteration k plus one in terms of the ellipsoid center at iteration k, and also bk, and n. So bk is the uh, this is the equation that defines bk. Uh, it's just like a temporary variable that is created sort of to simplify the equations. Um, n is the dimension of the problem. So, for example, in the case of a the vertex cover problem, n would be the number of edges in the graph. And uh, yeah, so uh, a is the positive definite matrix that describes the ellipsoid at the kth iteration, and uh, b k is the same. And a is also another variable. It takes the value of c if the center of the ellipsoid is feasible. So c is the uh, the vector that defines the objective function, uh, and in case the center of the ellipsoid is not feasible, a t takes the value of minus d. So, like I said earlier, 
if xk is feasible, we take the hyperplane of points that have the same values of the projective function, otherwise we take the negative of the normal to the uh, to the hyperplane. And uh, yeah, so d is so yeah, d is the the is a vector normal to the separator plane. All right. So just a quick uh, explanation, sort of, of why we need the earlier assumption I mentioned that the feasible region includes, contains some ball. Um, the authors of the paper actually um, are able to construct a class of 2D optimization problems such that no algorithm can solve the problem without knowledge of the inner ball. So by solving the problem, mean uh, we mean, I mean, uh, I mean, solving the problem assuming only access to a feasibility oracle. So the feasible regions of these optimization to the optimization problems are segments in the plane that end in zero and uh, form a certain angle with the x-axis. And what's really interesting here is that it turns out it doesn't matter what objective function you use. I mean, I. Uh, you can't use a constant objective function, obviously, but uh, I mean, no matter what objective function you use, no algorithm will be able to solve this class of organization problems, assuming only access to a feasibility uh, to a feasibility oracle. And the way they do this is um, they are actually able to construct an adversary that can switch like change the um, feasibility oracle during the course of execution of the algorithm without affecting the final result and they prove that no matter what the uh, algorithm does there will always be more than one possible solution so no matter how long the algorithm runs there will always be more than one possible solution in the solution set so by definition no algorithm can then solve the problem yeah so in summary i presented the ellipsoid method and show uh, so it's a method that solves combinatorial optimization problems with linear objective functions assuming access to a feasibility oracle the algorithm actually runs in polynomial time the authors the inventors of the algorithm prove this uh, and this is of course assuming an oracular feasibility checker meaning that it runs in time in constant time it doesn't depend on the, the feasibility checker doesn't depend on the size of the problem and it also computes the not just an approximate optimum but the exact optimum if it's allowed to run long enough that's it thanks